nothing. We figured it out that if we couldn't get it from the grocery store, we'd do it ourselves, right? And that's what this is about, the empowerment of regular Americans to feel like they are in control of some semblance of their life, even if it's as simple as their home. So every modular company and automated building process is fair game. At this time, I'm still in the magical era where I'm too ignorant to know what I don't know, you know? I don't know anything. It's, our lack of knowledge acts as, makes us more powerful and it makes us more imaginative about the way that we can implement this in new ways. I'm not reinventing anything. I'm taking novel approaches, wrapping them up, and then I'm gonna do them faster and better than other competitors can do. It's as simple as that. When we bring in the open source technology and we build in the ecological uh, materials, that's when you start actually making change. But it has to be visceral with people. It has to be, uh, it has to be a product that can be seen, felt. This is another factory that's a building in modularity as well. Now these guys build all their homes, boom, boom, all big. They put it on a big truck. They have weaknesses, right? You can't drive those big trucks everywhere. There's terrain issues. That's why the modular style and um, ability to transport it in basic vehicles is so powerful. This is it. Three days. This is what I'm selling. I'm gonna build your family a house in three days. The so Victory One iteration will be 30 days. The Victory Two iteration will be 10 days and Victory one iteration three will be three days of die trying. And we will keep going until we hit three days. Now there are issues of concrete um, curing and other material concerns that we are, um, that I'm unsure about, but this is the goal. Three days, shoot for the moon. If I hit five days, still pretty cool. If I hit seven days, still fucking pretty crazy, right? You know, but three days is what we're trying for. And everything I designed is with this three days in mind. Neptune. So this is my new farm that I bought in May. That's going to basically be completely renovated into a model home, little extravaganza. The difference is that it's going to actually be incorporated into nature to sell the idea that we're not just building homes, we're building something that you need to accept and understand your role and, and, and um, your connection to nature with. So what we're going to do is, in this, this, so this was a, we bought a petting zoo, the, a dilapidated petting zoo, and we're, we're in the process of renovating it. There will be model homes of the uh, Seed Eco iteration and Victory iteration one in opposite corners with uh, botanical gardens in between to give an experience that the user can feel a part of nature and use the houses that we're trying to sell them. That is something that you can't get but from other competitors. You want to sleep in the house we're going to sell you? Come on down. Nope. This is uh, this is our pond. This is uh, some vegetation. This is our uh, swan and duck. Uh, we, unfortunately, we have to keep a uh, fence around the pond because the swan um, they have these like long ass claws, and I guess one stuck in somebody in somebody's belly. So. We have to keep them locked up for now. <laughs> I, I do feel a little bit bad about, you know, keeping them in a cage of sorts. He's got a whole pond, but, you know. You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. So we purchased this property also because it has three large-scale greenhouses. So the greenhouses will be, will be experimenting with the greenhouses as well at the same time as galvanizing around the, the homes that we'll be using as models. These are the things that I'm uh, shooting for of our key uh, differentiators. This is also copied. Lead well and passive house. This is how we get the people that are crazy green into the fray. The victory home will be designed with the passive house standard, so it'll only be able to move in three different iterations based on where the sun is and in relation to the user's lot. So we'll have three basic iteration patterns with the sun in mind, always the sun in mind. Um, for that advanced enclo enclosures, you guys will see that with a little bit of the insulated concrete form, organic building materials. 
It's a lid concrete form, it's made of styrofoam. It's an oil-based product, not crazy about it, but it gives us the opportunity to use something that is completely um, airtight while, while building capital for hempcrete blocks, which we want to build in the same ICF concrete forms uh, at a later date once we get that down there. Mini splits, they're amazing. And then hybrid, this hybrid heat pump, I actually want to redesign the hybrid heat pump specifically for our design iterations um, in the house. Different topic, real something that we can all nerd out to later. Why? The why is so important to everything we do. So I'm going to give you just a little timeline about the why so you can real, really understand the galvanizing factors behind this and why everything is happening so fast. So in May 2020, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, George Floyd's killed. Why can I are part of the protest groups and the cleanup groups? And the electricity and change between ourselves and our communities was something I've not, not felt. It was the first time I ever felt that our African-American community could decide to break off from us and, and start new groups outside of our traditional societal norms. And I wouldn't have blamed them. One of the things about America is that everything is so overpriced. You know, we've, we've talked and, 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 you know, I'm not a philanthropist. Uh, I'm not a social worker. This is a way through, um, you know, the economic means of the United States that we can provide something that's value that is uh, actually affordable and can make these communities better. A part of Victory, every part of a Victory home, some of that money will go back into the project to make uh, underserved and, and um, uh, neighborhoods that need more help available. However, in June 2020, family begins to pick up pace as charities are stretched and they pivot. So their main mission no longer is their mission. They begin to pivot. And their resources rightfully go back to the countries in which they reside, but everybody that was on this charity tit all of a sudden has no nowhere to go and nothing to have tangibly. This galvanizes me against the charity myth. If we don't teach people how to do things, they will perish. I believe that. We have to teach people to fish, not just give them fishies, right? And that's what part of this program is about that I like so much as well, right? <clears throat> so, in June 2020, we discover open source ecology. I become obsessed. And it's, it is the galvanizing vision for what would become the victory home. The idea of the open source ecology and giving away everything. Christian said something that really caught my mind is that mm. everywhere the United States goes and everything we do, there always seems to be something underlying that we're looking to get from somebody else. We're always looking for some resources. We're always looking for some money. We're always looking for something. But we're never just giving it for just for no reason. You know what I mean? That, that's a little bit different in the charity model, of course. But that, again, I don't think works. July 2020, we agree that we can... I'll dedicate my life to affordable housing in the United States, and uh, I can quit my job once the revenue or capital matches my current W-2, which is what I'm really hoping happens really fast. Um, research commences. Um, I'm obsessed. And then uh, August 2020, I buy my first dwelling, renovate it, and then uh, in May 2021, we buy Ad Natorum, which Ad Natorum, Return to Nature, is about it, everything I do going forward. So the timeline continued. Now we're impressed. So the goal is the completion of the, the completion of the future farm base planning and preparation for seed iteration. That's supposed to happen in in um, spring of next year. I am having a baby in February, so it's going to have to be a little bit flexible. But I'll put that thing on a little little backpack and it'll get started. Or you know, work in the open source ecology uh, <laughs> right away. I'm also going to present the idea of future schools to uh, Maslin Teachers Union. Um, this is another component of that teaching. Teaching. Our children need to learn capitalistic ideas, entrepreneurship, and a trade that's actually viable before they leave high school. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous that we're, we're setting these kids up for failure and we're like, oh, what is, I wonder we're disenchanted with society. We have got to teach them something that, that gives them the ability to, to give into the society because 
They want it. They're hungry for it. And I believe that this is going to be part of it. And then year one is also being, uh, building towards the main certifications. Year five, victory home construction companies are able to validate construction company standards, meaning that we're able to build our, our iterated standard anywhere in the United States. And then the first iteration of Future School in Ohio teaches our ICF and or victory construction techniques. That means we go to the schools. It's a very big part of the open source ecology thing that I, I think I know that you've done some work in, but we need to, we're, we're old, you know what I mean? We're older than we need to be. The imagination and hunger and strength of our youth will propel our nation forward if we're willing to teach them. That is the most important thing that we can do. And hopefully in year five, the first hempcrete blocks are approved for commercial adaptation. And then the 10 years, I think, will commence after that of uh, actually people being like, mm, I don't know if that's safe. Year 10, the wider adoption of ICF building standards, and then east, west, and central, central representation within the United States of victory homes or open source ecology building standards in general. Whichever one. This isn't about victory homes in itself. This is about getting open source ecology ideas out there and letting people do what they will with it. We need better marketing. We need more. We need more. We need more. This is ICF, right? This is styrofoam with um, plastic mechanisms in between. You fill it with concrete. It gets hard as a mother, and then you got a house. The great thing about these is they're built in um, staggered formations. So if you look up here, when my ICF building blocks are delivered on site, they'll look something like that. They'll be in a Roy G. Bib thing, and then Roy G. Bib will just repeat if it if it's um, if there's more than that. So they'll be delivered in red orange, yellow iterations, they'll, they'll put them up, you brace them on both sides so they stay straight and you pour the concrete in. Do you have a video or something to explain it better? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anthony. Oh wait, just one second, I just want to show that just real quick. Just so you guys can see, just all right, basic picture. This is the monopore system. This is the footer and the whole house poured in one day. Right? That's the that's the power. I'm not I'm not attached to any technology. When it gets better, I'll iterate it again. But we will stay at the edge of every technology because that will keep us competitive in the marketplace and because builders refuse to get, get to the times. So we're going to pull them because we're going to make a product that's cheaper, better, faster. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thanks. cooperative model. I want to start something with employee-owned membership in my businesses. However, in the United States, it's not a common model, and I haven't seen it work. Although, you know, I'm I'm willing to try that to fail, and uh, I think that's the, the real good one. Okay. So, like partners, can you explain more? Yeah. Uh, How to organize? Have a seat. Yeah. We'll talk in ten minutes. So here's how this session works. Scream out what the presentation was about short form, like tweets, what would you tell, what did you just present us? Perfect. Or you can write Solving, it. yeah. What should I, yeah, go, yeah. Ahead, go ahead. Well, solving old problems in new ways. Okay. Affordable housing solutions. Great. Ken? Uh, giving customers great planning for free. Matthew? Giving people in the Rust Belt something tangible they could actually believe in. Yeah. Okay. Better, cheaper, faster, stronger in housing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I would say using new technology to make housing better. Uh, realizing the latest building technology in an accessible way. 
I got one. So preparing the youth to uh, desire their own homes. Yeah. Oh. Creating open source construction companies with the formal construction models. Sweet. Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. Yeah. What was great about Anthony's presentation? What did you really like? Enthusiastic. Yeah. Strong as a mother. Yeah. <laughs> no, 100% conviction. Genuine. More okay. about the content? Well, also that motivation is the contest. Like, that that's what is needed to get this off the ground, and that he really has that. Yeah. That's, that is unique, and I think really effective. I think it'll be really effective. Well, translating motivation to the people is the challenge. Excellent. Yeah. I think he's got a strong why, and has done his research, R&D, and uh, I think he's uh, ahead of the, of the leap. He's coming here, open source ecology, getting to know how can he uh, create this system of change that can um, collaborate in a meaningful way. So, um, uh, yeah. Eric? Inside solution safe. Paul? Uh, sorry, what was the question? What did you like about his right, approach? Oh, sorry, no, another one. Sorry. Another yes, one. His smart goals, they are uh, specific, measurable, <laughs> actionable, um, and the other RT. Yeah. Anybody <laughs> else would say realistic? Pretty sure. Realistic. You want to share another one? What was great about it? Another element you appreciate. Um, like humility, like understanding that we don't know much, that we don't have enough, and that we're willing to see beyond our limitations to get something better, stronger, faster. Yeah. Great. Thanks everyone. Now, who also wants to critique? with the focus on how to do this in a cooperative fashion. What is your input in general about the presentation, how it can be improved, and specifically about how to do it in a cooperative way? Publish it on a wiki or in a public format. Yeah. Be critical. Okay, so... Uh, uh, I, I don't see like the money, like where is it coming from, what are the channels, the uh, stakeholders, um, okay. man Manny? manufacturer techniques, whatever. Uh, yeah, well I know I've been obsessed with this for a year and this is just a short presentation, but I, I imagine there uh, is plenty of pitfalls with uh, legal tape, that's the question right? Um, sort of the bureaucratic circumstances that uh, are not there to help him. Uh, okay. Yeah. Problem? But, yeah. Um, I, I know this is open source, but you say you're going to go posing yeah. as a customer and basically steal trade secrets and make them open source. And I don't know the legal ramifications of that. Or maybe there are if it's open source. No, no, of course okay. they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. We'll, we'll discuss it. I just want to confirm that you give me a little bit of time to do Um, it's not you really to said, but, um, that's, it's a question I have even with open source ecology, is that open source thing is so cool, but how, yeah, how do you make money and make it available at the same time? Uh, I don't know. You haven't talked about anything any technologies that about open source ecology and uh, that's one and like you talked about the fab foam monopure but it does uh, it's not really modular or is it? Oh. Uh, this is more like how to make it cooperative from the beginning and I would uh, I guess like cold uh, email potential partners or run a Google Ads campaign just to a website for people looking for affordable homes and then ask them what are you looking for or do you mind giving feedback or coming to visit my farm? I think the farm is a great selling point. So. Yeah, sell the farm, yeah. yeah. Or like air concept. Yeah, two points both in regards to um, terminology and sort of marketing. Uh, the first is the original statement, although it was concise and I appreciate that. It did have open source as a phrase, I'm not sure if your target market's going to understand that, if it's worth your time trying to educate the target market about that. Um, the other one was kind of sort of funny or nitpicky here, but Hempcrete, 
we try to have high time to a conservative, God fearing, uh, rural populace out in Ohio. You might want to call it like Grass Creek or something instead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Structural biomass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Any other critique? Go ahead. Um, the thought of permaculture. If I had a chance to ask you questions, I would ask about permaculture in relation to your environmental and development. Mm -hmm. More critique. A focus on uh, the, the starting point. There was like, uh, it, it's good to see like a, a, a one year, a five year, a 10 year plan, but like all those are hinged upon the first step. Nailing that first step is dependent, it is required to get to the second step. So then a bit more time perhaps in your farm, like what you're building, how you're building it. Well, the first help. Okay. Any last thoughts? Missing a price point. Numbers, just expanding on the price point, but like all numbers, like yeah. materials, labor, uh, total cost, uh, utilities, land purchase price, everything. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone. Before we roll mm -hmm. up, do you want to synthesize what just happened? What was your impression? I love y'all. <laughs> Likewise. I got nothing but love. So thank, uh, and thank you. And thank you, Marcin, for creating this place for us to come in and do this. I, it's more important than you know. Anthony, on oh. your presentation, oh. the feedback, what did you remember? All of them. Um, price point. Uh, tangible uh, uh, material costs and everything of like that nature. Um, making sure I have a conservative and a liberal selling point mechanism. Um, that is uh, not going to push anyone away. And then um, just really, uh, I would say in my mind, details. Meticulous, meticulous um, concentration on details. And then of course, adding the new company to the Great, thanks. Give it up for Anthony. Oh, to Paul for an excellent management. Oh, all right. yeah. Who's next? Who's next? <laughs> oh, we all done presentations. Oh, no. Oh. no, there's at least one. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're going to show us one slide, and we're going to do this again. Food. And uh, we can't I'll be more I'll critical than next. you were. I'll do it next, next time. Next Are you that's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. What is that? Does this have a name? No, 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 some people call it a beehive. A beehive. It's a hive of people, but it's structured. So the idea is to avoid the conversational trap. Man, this was that was good, man. So everybody good. participates. I really like the part where you, you structure it so it was like we laid it on the positive stuff. Yeah. So it was like a warm and inclusive, but then we could like go to the next phase of like actual critical details and whatnot. Because it's like sometimes when you get constructive feedback, you know, like, oh, I appreciate it. Like, it still feels like it's being cut. Yeah. yeah. So, like, this started out with, like, a hug, and then we were like, oh, and by the way. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And then he ended with, like, having to, like, reformat whatever was said. Right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he tried to get away from that. He did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's not closed source. It's not open source either. Because <laughs> it doesn't have a license. But you can use it, anybody can use it. Is it like Toastmasters or something? Uh, no, we practiced it in Toastmasters. Okay, is there any uh, format? Well, the group that I volunteer with, it calls it the Beehive. Okay. So the three rounds. Because uh, there's a, a, a brand click, if you will, uh, the, the concept of honey first and stings later. <laughs> so oh, we, 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 can play, oh, we can play that next time if you want. Can you send us a link, man? Some, uh, something, sure. But it's not on the web, it's nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we just do it as a community. Can, huh. can they, well, can they patent um, manufacturing techniques within the The, the what? process patents exist, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. So be careful what you feel. Yeah. So, so <laughs> now it's yeah. conversation time. You can, you can, uh, you can engage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Your question, your yeah, question cool, was good. But go ahead, Andrew, you're not going to go directly your into, that, into the technology, you're going to go the, into the um, 
like the, the, the general system, you know, the, the workflow, like, um, okay, you, you see that they're having bigger modules, you're not gonna and steal the machine, you're gonna steal, okay, this is how they work, I'm right. gonna kind of redo it in my own way. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't you don't go and steal the the blueprints of the of the machine. <laughs> you know? Well, what what I heard was that you have a why, you have the vision, and you also have the land, and that the starting place is you building an eco, a sea eagle home and another a couple other designs that you run across to start doing the whole critical iteration thing that we're doing here and based on that research, create something that you can offer in a, in a kit to different different um, pockets of consumers, other consumers. How yeah. can you go in depth with that, with what you want to do in the land? I think that's that's very important. Yeah, that was my next was just uh -huh. next thing to say is is that that when Maddie was asking about the like what is the first step thing, mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's what I'm most interested in. Is okay, cool. Like, what is, what's your next like thing on the land you're gonna do? And mm. cleaning. Okay, yeah, yeah great, yeah. great. Okay, you're all invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have another yeah. chainsaw. I got one, and then just like this one tree fell down. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this, and then like I didn't do it. So, but I still have a chance. So you saw any drug advertising to plants? Sorry? Plants and water. That's a story. The thing about like a chainsaw is you need to like just... I'm not like, sure about the... To run it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's got a battery. Oh, it's got a battery. Yeah, yeah. A 40 volt right away one. But I keep it in the back. Okay. 48 volts. 40. Right. Okay. I kind of wish yeah. if they had uh, spots on there for two and did it in serial so it was like evil. I don't believe like that. Like I had the lawnmower and the lawnmower it definitely was in the back for two batteries and serial. Yeah, I really see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. You go. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, the lawnmower is okay. It's the uh, snowblower that needs the, the serial. Yeah. But I don't know about the, 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 the chainsaw. I started to use it, but it was like, this thing was all up the air. It was hot. And I was just right. like, I'm ready for that one. Yeah, but now you build the house and now you're like, oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Building really my, uh, uh, my yeah. courage, my motivation, my yeah. momentum. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, oh, I was wondering about, um, are you familiar with Burn Culture? I assume that you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, are you, um, like, doing the, uh, what are the topographical lines where you're measuring, like, the highest point in the land? Yes. Not not quite that. Um, ours is more for like safety and drainage and kind of like the boring stuff. Yeah. But uh, you're offering it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We want to build it into nature rather than kill nature in order to. Right. You know what I mean? That's one of the worst things about the neighborhood. Is they kill. No, it's in my hometown. It's just really good. I do like Burns Culture. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, like the next time you hunt for it and have it. Uh, uh, the tail is going to change the if you're comfortable in the work. First thing is, yeah. you know, it's not that it's just giant yeah. chunks. Too big. The chunks are too big and not the same kind of But, but I, I will have to excavate, so I mean, it might be something that is searching that if I was going to do it, but I have the dozer, that's the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. So you, you want smaller chunks, you want even consistency, the flavoring's on point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's yeah, um, actually the you want original though. You don't want any terraforming like, and, and, and permaculture. I'm obsessed with that. Like what's going on in the southwest of the United States? Oh, right, They're going to need it. All right, we'll share a video. I'm going to show the best potatoes out. Um, One potato. These Indian okay. groups okay. that they have these really shallow ponds. And so they're moving. Yeah, they're they're rebuilding their their, 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 their uh, environment <laughs> as well. And they have some really really great cool, novel, easy ideas. I think we really do ourselves a disservice when we go and complicate things to the utmost degree, you know? I mean, it's kind of crazy. Me and Christian and, uh, and um, anybody else? Curtis are going to build this, like, thing that heat up limestone like we did, like, 200 years ago, but we're keeping it simple. An induction oven. Uh, I don't know, we're just going to give him like 3,000 bucks and, and get some materials and, and build it. Cool. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Get a spoonful too. No. Not the yeah. other thing about it. That's yeah. Good. yeah. 
Alright. Well, I have pickled eggs for anybody who wants. Is that not good? It's like ice cream or something. It is like ice cream. And you want a spoonful? Alright. So, uh, one spoon left. I gotta tell Marshall to do it. Oh, you need the ESOP? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Did Blake have some ownership program? Yeah. 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 I feel like if you leave it for that, I'm going to take it for like... It's like, yeah, Christians. Christians. Can we eat some of your granola? All right, so Sweet. there's like a... This thing called a communism. Uh, you guys may have heard of it. No. Essentially, no. the, uh, I mean, they're, they're the all worker all owns the means of production. Communism? Is communism, yep. We can go into a bunch of details about it. Uh, but really, let's just focus on that one part specifically. The, the worker owns the means of production. Anthony, this part's for you. What if we were to step away from everything else about that and just focus on that one component and take that component and throw it into a capitalistic based society? So, what other forms of like uh, the worker owning the means of production do we already have in our society? I think that's the, that's a hard. It is very hard. <laughs> I'm not wrong, am I? What what is it? Like I, I think like it, it's because of the specialization of labor. If you have a specialization of labor, you can't have the same salary. And if you are not having salaries, who's owning the business? So it would not be a business, it will be a foundation. Well, they exist. Okay. They exist. So corporate well, companies exist. The yeah, Italians do it really well. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. There's a healthcare company in the US with 1,500 employees, and whenever they have a do downturn in the, in the season and less customers, they all jointly vote on what to do. So 70% of that company uh, choose to be a part owner of the company. And they all collectively reduced their time, working time, with like 18 percent, just flat off. Reduce their Extreme time? Flexible. Like, well, what do you mean? Like, uh, they reduce their weight? No, the time. Yeah, well, the time they work and also the pay they get back. But it's at the flat. same time, they give the money. They give, they pay for being part of being own, like having a a share of the ownership. The no, they do. The, the share of the ownership comes from the fact that they work. There. For the for the fact that they work. I think that would help w in, in bigger companies, mm -hmm. but like I'm, I'm talking more like... A five person uh, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like well, imagine like a 50 person, 50 people. W what about a small business? Uh -huh. How many people do you think is going to own the majority of small businesses out there? I think one. Uh, like the majority of businesses are owned by one person. By one person, like a family. Uh -huh. So what's the difference between like one person owning a business versus like the idea of a large group of people owning a business? Is, is just the size. Yeah. So we already have a model in which you know and are very familiar with as far as workers owning the means of production, mm -hmm. which is the small family business. All we're doing is expanding that out so that you have a much bigger family and perhaps the family isn't necessarily based upon um, genetics. The family ba is based upon like similar work ethics, similar ideologies, similar directions, mm -hmm. similar goals. And the goal could simply be that we want to make money in order to go on vacation. Yeah. The goal doesn't have to be that we want to do open source. The goal doesn't have to be we want to save the planet. It could just simply be vacations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with that in mind, you can any business can be an open source, uh, or not an open source, but an employee sponsored ownership program. Specifically, you just have to, like Hy-Vee is, uh, is a grocery store that is all over the place and that is employee owned. Uh, lots and lots and lots of engineering firms are employee owned. Uh, anything that has partners, like a lawyer firm or a doctor's firm, that automatically leads itself, lends itself to becoming an employee-owned firm. It's just a matter of like how many people are going to be on the end. Generally, like in a lawyer's firm, you only have people that are at the very top, and they're going to exclude as many people as possible as they want to keep the money from themselves. Well, it's a matter of skilled labor. But, but, but like, enough, come but. on. No, no, yeah. So skilled labor is any system that uses skilled labor lends itself to the idea of partnerships and ownership. Right. Yeah, the but problem, but Anthony different. also talks about making things really easy and fast to fit. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you would almost benefit more from like a, a dual system where you have the skilled labor side that has the communal ownership and then the you know, less less skilled labor force. I like the idea. Yeah. 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 We're missing one factor here and then this fact that so many companies are run by employees who don't like the leadership they work for. Oh. And, and there's a disconnect between what they understand and see in their everyday work and what the, what the boardroom should be doing. Yeah. The democratization of it, maybe not for all business structures, gives people want to feel that they collaborate towards that goal. It doesn't matter if they're building a stone wall or or you know sell, saving dolphins. It, it, it's it's the act of doing it and knowing it makes a difference um, that powers people. Like the Russians had this, the Russians in gulags had this crime where they asked people to carry a stone to the other side 
And when we were all done with all the stones, they were asked to carry them back. Mm -hmm. That was the like worst torture they could ever endure, because they knew they worked for absolutely nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, uh, I think for the reactivation of the depression in 1929, mm -hmm. they did the same. Like, there was a, a group of workers that dug a hole, and the other one to pull it back, that's true, or it, I sounds, mean, it sounds a lot like building a seed home and then having it be <laughs> pulled out and show up. And this is the boy, <laughs> yeah, but we don't get paid, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is about the wanting to have them have um, power and buy it, and, 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 and to know that their, their work and their ideas and imagination matter. This is, I mean, it, the business has to survive, but this but is more about more than the money component. Can I, can I, can I ask uh, something? Uh, so, like in this uh, employee owner, uh, like businesses, first, what, what's the percentage? Because what I've, I've heard or what I've uh, investigated, it's like no more than five percent, ten percent. Uh, like of ownership of the company? Yeah, of the big company. So it depends uh, on the structure of it. Uh, some companies force it. The, uh, the, the ones that I've worked at, it, as soon as you left the company, you had to sell all your stock in the company yeah, that's right the then on the day. That, 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 that was my second question. Uh, so that's one system. Uh, also, these places, it's generally is like there's a, uh, a percentage of your money, uh, that, however much money you make, a percentage of that is then uh, put into like a fund of stock in the company. And then uh, you get 20% of that a year up to five years, and the five year you're fully invested, and all that money is yours. So the the 20%, so it's like on year three, if you leave, so you you got 20% of the first year, 40 the second year, and 60% of the third year. So then that's how much of that money you get when you leave. You aren't really invested in the company fully. And then after the year five, all of it's like fully invested, so you get a full payout. And then the the stock of the company would go up. If the company's doing well, the stock price goes up. I like it, man. I really like it. it goes down. It's yeah, a, I really, I like yeah, but but uh, like uh, that hundred percent is not a hundred percent. It's like uh, in, ownership in the, of the company. Yeah, but you can stay five years, you get it all. Yeah, you get all from what you've invested in the company. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, that's what he's trying to say. So, but all that you invest invested in the company is not even like zero point zero one percent, you know, because you're an employee that wins five k or three k a, a, a month, you know. So like. That's the comparison. It's an idea that you give to the employees that they have the, but it's not really true. Like it's not. It's true that they own it, but they own so small. But they feel that they are part and as uh, Andrew was saying, they were rewarded directly for their hard work. Uh -huh. Maybe they, not that day, but they know that they, their hard work is going to come back to them. Uh -huh. And, and the future of the company is theirs. Yeah. That's yeah, the the, some of the ones that worked at they also had like full voting. But systems. it's an idea, man. It's an idea. You gotta realize that. So. Yeah, but it, so. there are companies like that. There are cooperative uh, healthcare companies for, for healthcare. Yeah. Like, but healthcare yeah. companies, man. Like the, that shit. Like, so if I can that mention devil, like, a similar example. So in Detroit, I am renovating uh, abandoned houses to sell affordably to people, and I get help from a lot of contractors who have like a lot of skills, and they themselves. They could build a house themselves from scratch, but they will never save up or get a loan for money. So, like, they can't own a home even though they can build one, which seems wow. like very alienating. Mm -hmm. And I would love to involve them in the but, but, but the incentives right now are that they want to be paid for their work, and their incentive is to bid me, like, larger and larger jobs, because if I tell them I'm going to pay you in shares of my company, they're going to be like, what the fuck, dude? I want money. Uh, I believe in you. I think you have good intentions, but, like, it's not... It's like promises, right? Like you're selling the house. I still have until, my until you sell your first, until I sell, I sell my first house, um, you know, it's pretty imperial to them. So I have a challenge to get them to you treat me as anything other than a customer. Like I'm like, I want to be your partner. Like, right. I, no one else is selling houses in Portland, in Detroit. So let's work together. And uh, I think they're just, um, trust is, the system is so beating them down that they. But I think, I think it doesn't work until it does. Sure. If we if we if we provide an example, so my initial inclination was everything off of material and uh, business expenses gets divided up by whoever worked the project evenly, and that's that. All the I'm, profit from all of it. For example, I'm I'm trying to figure out like the concept of my business comes from the fact of giving without anything in return. 
understanding that the world is gonna give you back but it's not the same person that it's gonna give you back you know it's like I, I'll give Matty uh, a house uh, and like the pay it for him and and the pay for is not gonna come from him like you give me a house and then maybe I give Paul a house uh -huh. sure. also maybe I just give it to and Adam then someone him. in the world I'm gonna have a f I, I'm gonna need a favor I'm gonna need something someone and someone is gonna give me yeah. you know Sure, I mean, that's trust, right? Like, you're trusting that the universe behaves in this way, it's, which... It's, it's, it's more a community kind of relationship. Yeah. Because, like, uh, in, in the way it was formed, the concept was formed, was a closed loop, was a closed community. So it's not like, you know, you, you jump, you, you go to Asia and you're expecting someone to give you back. You kind of expect that uh, maybe uh, Hampus give me something back because he kind of saw me giving something to... Uh, to Maddie, but it's not, it's not really that way. But it's a closed system. You know, it's not a. But yeah, like uh, I'm I'm trying to figure out a way because I, I'm I'm thinking about it. I have like a lot of friends that they're not gonna invest a dime. Maybe they will, but uh, they they're not here investing what I've invested. I'm I'm having I've like I went to Germany. Then I, I'm, I'm coming here, then I'm gonna go back to Portugal, I'm gonna keep on going into my community stuff, and then I'm gonna go back to Peru, and I'm gonna have a bunch of friends that w are willing to come and work with me. What is the percentage? What is the percentage I'm gonna give them? Like whatever the labor is, like at a fair market rate for skill and whatnot, and then you take that and give them a 10% cut into your company. So like they work twenty dollars or say twenty bucks an hour. So you you, you say give two, it, it, you give an extra two bucks an hour in stock in the company. Dude, but they're my friends, man. Like for that's not a community. It's gonna be like I'm the the, the owner of the business Which and uh, all knowledge. my friends are my yeah. chuckles. Yeah, it might make them work better. It might be more. It should be an incentive. It should be something that pushes everyone to to do it better. And and like, what do you think it will be the consequence if I give them my sh all the share? Well, well like you do it smartly. Or like, for example, I was thinking, fifty for fifty percent the company, fifty percent. But remember, you share did all the investing of your time and traveling and everything. You maintain ownership of the company based on like how much effort you've already put into it. Right. So whatever rules you give to other people, you use the same rules of cutting to yourself. But you cut in all this labor that you're putting in right now, as essentially sweat equity you've already put into the company. So you would start out with an extra sure amount of uh, shares. That's, that's a good one. You're the only one here. You know what? That's sweat equity. And I then like over it. time, yeah. you would be giving, yeah. you so would be losing percentages equity. of the company, but you'd be losing those percentages of the company to people that are dedicated and committed to the company themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like a gradual transition. And then as you're doing this transition uh, uh, of actual like power, you're also like incorporating their ideas that like you want this to live on beyond you. What that means that you'd have to like set it free, like a bird into the sky. You can't like trap it in a cage and control it. That's just gonna smother and kill it. So it's like this this risk and this fear all mixed into one and you just kinda have to accept it. Yeah, that. and that's 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 the thing, you know, like I know that the majority of, of, of people that I'm gonna be open and I'm gonna open my doors you know and they're gonna come and they're gonna work and they're gonna like it and blah blah. They're gonna leave, and that's the reality of it. Yep. Of it. Like they're gonna leave, not because it's a bad business or not. It's because it's, it's like that. Man. Nobody likes the same things, and there are people that I'm gonna make it tougher for them. And like, like it's basically what's happening here, and what how kind of margin is kind of giving us like a, a, a narrow path for us to walk, you know, and like, and then. You kind of get get almost nothing, you know, just the idea or like the the, the business practices or the work. And in in contrast, it's like merchant coming or maybe with a friend of his and saying like, you because I'm, you're my friend, take thirty percent of my business. Let's work every day, all day. I think that would cost problems more than solutions, more than incentives, more than anything. Yeah, I mean, I think it's up to us to use these skills and start our business after that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, it's definitely like this is a gateway to a certain extent. Yeah, this is a very special place, but like we have to still do the work. Uh -huh. Eventually, we have to catch people in. And uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so. So I guess I'm, I'm a little more skeptical of, like, but for example, I have started this with a friend. Yeah. I don't mean to be negative on your experience with your friends, but I have found that uh, conflict. Conflict. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's complicated for you to start with a friend. Like one person, maybe one person works harder or cares more than the other person. And then, and you're like, well, I don't want to say anything because we're friends. All my business friends that own a business, yeah. every one of them yeah. has told me, if you're going to do a business, do it on your own, a hundred percent yours. Because there's going to be conflicts of interest. And peop and you might want to work and make it better and, and stronger, but they are going to say, no. I want my vacations and I want my beach house and I want my dog and I want my... And like, there's gonna be a, a, a con yeah, because we don't share the same culture. Maybe same idiosyncrasy, but not culture. You know? So there's this book that is about creating intentional communities and. It relates to your discussion in that in the chapter it's all sorts of questions on revealing hidden expectations. Like so that you can reduce the conflict damage for any potential partners in business or in living or in friendship or you know, you can use it whenever you know, in whatever setting. But I wonder if um, because it's true the only way that you're really have control over is if it's your own. But how how do you get labor then? You know? I'll tell you. I don't want control. I want chaos. I want chaos. I want real chaos because through chaos is the I'm gonna grow. I'm not gonna grow if everything is ordered and like tidy and that might Jeff Bezos. I will leave that to Jeff Bezos. But for me, I want people taking leadership, going to one place to another without me. Like this. Exactly, because that's real collaboration, that's real commitment, that's not a paying job, it's no, not a, we've worked harder, we've worked harder than people that get paid, and I don't, I'm not doing it because I'm gonna get paid, or because I won't get paid, or because I'm learning, or all these, you know, uh, mental gaps that we might have, I'm doing it because I, that's how I wanna live. Yeah. I want to live my life giving everything yeah. and like today I was burned well done, I was there you know lifting yeah. one panel I really like the, with my head but with that's the, okay uh, you know I was part of me that was like all of us are going to have this feeling like oh it's too much like you would directly address that I kind of see that there's going to be there's gonna be fun and at the end, go. I'm gonna be the one suffering. Oh, yeah. like, you know, yeah. I'm gonna be the one saying, yeah. I give I everything to you, and like, you yeah, look yeah. how you yeah. fucking treat me. Yeah. Take, yeah. You don't wanna work with yeah. this yeah. anymore, you wanna leave, and basically I gave it to you. Yeah. And I feel that's so. Uh, I kind of predict. Is this still recording? Yeah, uh, We're still live. We gave like lots of really good feedback. Did we? Yeah. We got, uh, I don't know, it was like, uh, Katarina's in here, oh, Katarina's tw in here twice, and Joshua Thomas is in here. Oh, yeah. it, Joshua Thomas is the guy that's doing the uh, the IT, right? He's who yeah, I need to... Yeah, he's the best. All right, let's get a hold You're of this, Joshua. You're the best, man. Yeah. Joshua, we miss you. Joshua, I need access to uh, the Wikipedia page. There's an account with a username of Matty, M-A-T-Y. I'm just going to go ahead and need you to give that account admin privileges. Oh, I just checked. It's not done yet. Could you, could you get on that? Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> well, sure, I'll get right on it. Hey, thanks. You're a peach, Joshua. Does that seem like it would be great? What you're talking about with like 
giving everything and then being balanced, you know, that might not work out in your favor. Mm -hmm. Like that oh, just what are these poles? made me think about my experience in Montessori preschool teaching where I had to set up the results I wanted because I couldn't depend on the children to act a certain way, you know? And so I had to come up with like creating oh, other boundaries to kind of so that like the normal human actions would bounce off it and, and create a result that I feel. And so I wonder what kind of thing like that could be created. How out of Okay. If I'm working with kids, I don't want to work. You know, I want my sure, committed, conscious, uh, self or but what I'm saying is not not calling those adults immature. I'm saying that we are all preschoolers inside, and that human nature is human nature, even among committed, pe like even pe like people who are. But look at good. look here. No, no, listen, listen. No, right? here, but you listen, can here. listen to what I'm saying though. Like two good people with great intentions and great work ethic could still have conflict, even though neither one of them is wrong. Also, no. conflict isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. That's it's true, too, but, but I mean, the kind that you are really wanting to not have, that can happen between two good, committed, awesome people. And so the key is creating like expectations, like talking about what would happen if, and um, uncovering hidden expectations, right? And that's, yeah, and I think that's good. Uncovering uh, different expectations. I think expectations should not be um, like hidden, right? So well, they always are. That's the thing. Yeah, so but, like but just know that they will be and, and try to discover them, right? There are expectations towards not giving enough. Like if if I'm inviting you to a business, mm -hmm. there is gonna be a doubt in you that I'm not going to give you what I'm telling I'm going to give her. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a doubt of you that I'm going to not live up to my end of the agreement also. There's, there's that there's yeah. not going to be an end. Yeah, exactly. And there's not going to be this middle term in which both are happy. But the fact is that none will be happy. Because this is hard work. And money will never pay back. And like in these for-profit organizations, you give much more than you will ever have. Sure. So how do you stay afloat? Because you have to have money to do it, to do the work in the first place, right? Because it's not about money. Well, no, but you it's about the community. It's about the love. It's about the integrity. It's about developing. You know what you can contribute. You know what can you become? Not in a become of something uh, like an image, but the, the day to day work. It's going to take you somewhere. Yeah, you and know? I think that's all great, but without, it's the without knowing where the boundaries are and like where the like reference points to where we can say, okay, we got to this point. This is this is starting to look like what I didn't want. This is starting to look like what I did want. So like having boundaries and reference points, I think, is the key to keeping that spirit alive and keeping the momentum going. Because even if you have a lot of people with great spirit and great like passion, if you if there isn't money to buy the two by sixes, then you can't build the the two by sixes. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're saying you're, you're you're talking about if we don't have the money. Yeah, I'm not thinking that way. Like if we don't have the money, everybody goes to the house, to the house, you know, and like end of discussion. Right. But I'm talking about like through. Uh, I think more conflict for sure there's conflict in uh, scarcity there's conflict about money but I think conflict comes more about decisions because people in the end have money you know like yeah, you, you sell a few bit, a few uh, houses and you have for to leave for, for a year you know it's not like uh, fifty thousand dollars or whatever in with ten people you kind of have the amount to leave but it's about the decisions of you know you getting it wrong or like not seeing the full picture and people kind of it's our product that someone's saying like I don't, I don't think so and like staying home. 
or in the computer, or software, or whatever. It's, it's, I'm expecting that, you know? But I, I, I need this middle term, and I need like people that have this passion and this spirit that can go beyond their own limitations. And it's not limitations that they don't see or, or they don't understand what they're understanding, it's limitations of their own doubts, uh, their own fears. I've got people who have specific projects that they discussed with my children already, and that's what they're working on. How big are these? Is that not the case? But we're all working on people who have some of their own projects. First generations of mine, we have talked to about it. And we've had some enterprise nights before where we talked. And that's about the size of an average of the people working on it, and what resources are like cool now together. Yeah, and then also, I think yeah, I some of us are trying to see whether we can do something all together afterwards, yeah. like, yeah. you know, instead of forming our own company, it's coming together. Right, right, yeah. So, and they're right, I mean, the initial pricing model Like, I, I, I hope I'm on the same page with this one, I'll have to see what it is, so let me know if it is it. But, like, like, I came here knowing that I may not have a lot of energy, I may have to duck out of the work often to take care of myself, like, You have, you have the most energy. <laughs> My yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Like, of course, CD Go Home is, is, is very tough work, but you're always working and you're always seeing how to perfectionate certain systems that we've left behind because we're always like working, you know, and uh, what happened, you know, like, you could have stayed in your room, in your computer, yeah, I mean, doing your thing, I mean, I, I and not caring about this the house, so but you did, yeah. you did care, yeah. and that shows a lot, like a lot is, is that leap of, of faith or of confidence, of knowing what's, what's gonna make everyone happy and together and united. If I remember that's, that's the most important thing. It's the most important thing. And I do, and I go there but for the same kind reason. Of like these things for the same I reason I'm going to You know, like trying to do my work, uh, my best, and lifting all those joysticks and stuff, and like maybe staying up late, you know, with everybody, and get together and committed to solving this house problem. Like uh, how to build it, how to uh, create a better system. I think that's 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 so important in every sense. It is, it is important. But like I, I think I just brought this back up because I can see like you starting your the the company, there being someone who loves your vision and wants to help, but knows their limits and says, "Use the table and you know, I'm not going to be able to be this kind of worker, but I can be this kind of worker." Does this fit what you need? And that's the trick because most of the time we don't do that. We just are like, hey, I love it. Hey, cool. I like you. Hey, let's work together. And then both parties are assuming that what this one has to offer, like, that, that it matches perfectly. When, like, it, it may not. And those conversations are, like, the most important part, I think. Because, and I, I made sure to have that conversation with my friends when I got here. You're standing there. Yeah. I think that's 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 very important in two ways. The first one is that it's very hard to distinguish a business from a community or a family. It's very different. It's, the, it's very different. And and more like here in the United States or like in a capitalist society, they 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 tend to individualize everything and they give credit where they shouldn't, you know, like they say there's a lot of different kind of mini scams coming around, you know, the uh, working culture, organizational culture, and I don't want to live in that place, I don't want to live a 9 to 5, I don't want to be that person, I don't want to perpetuate that system, I want to create this democratization of labor, democratization of industry, in which people can re reunite 150 people I've heard, you know, like that's, that's the maximum, so like a group of, a group of people, I think that's a, that's a strong number, 
Um, so you do want a cooperative business where everybody has yeah, 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 yeah. They need yeah. executive executive people. Yeah, if not, they will become the state. I agree. And you I, know, I they, they're that's all that's gonna become bureau bureaucrats, mm -hmm. in which paperwork is gonna be the the way in which the system will work. But if you put meritocracy, merit meritocracy as first hand, uh -huh. yep. everything is gonna work because people that are smart and that know the culture and know the tech and know the workflow, they are gonna and say this is what I have to offer. Can you judge me? You know, does it work for your organization to judge me according to what I can offer? As an Right? And then, okay, yeah. So you, so you do think it's possible yeah, then to have that? Right. Company. Like, that's why I'm here, because yes. this is the only thing I, I realized can work. And uh, it's not that open source ecology is, is, is basically what's going to save the world. We, there's a lot of different organizations and people and non-profit and profit and communities around the world that are waiting for this opportunities, that are, wor are, are, are working to create this technology, but they don't know open source world in which they can literally have that access, but it's not really accessible. Right. Nowadays, it's not accessible. You go to the wiki, you don't understand nothing. I, I'm going to do it. Hold the camera. Oh, you don't understand. Yeah. Make it digestible, yeah. man. Yeah, because like, well, I, I think first Jesus. it needs yeah. to be like for there the lay person. Like open source is not, is, is, is not mean, accessible. Yeah, there needs and, to be and like... And even though the information is like there, there is still a lot to and think yeah. about. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of... Like, how, uh, maybe the uh, merge has put 80 you know, or 70% you know, of the project. Yeah. But you need to put that 30%. And that 30% is a lot of work. Yeah. But so it, like it's not so digestible, it's not so easy, and, and you need to put your your part in. in yeah, I know. I have to like to just understand what it is. I don't even know how software does it. Like how do people digest everything that's in? Also, and is it just like like one guy really just doing that? Just doing that on a chart? Yeah, we're hard to work on. All day. Yeah. All day, every day. That made me think of, but maybe of you. Um, yeah. Like maybe some I just don't see you get like the body more of like the inside, and they just kind of like you know, they're still just like a That's a great idea. But for the company, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. It's like on my podcast. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that to be free, but this is not good. I will do it. Yeah. For it, I think the ones who do have some social accountability that they may have a place in the past. Something that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that, uh, I'm sure that there's biologists and neuroscientists that have quantified that, that and what, like, okay. what it is that then makes that the difference between yeah. finishing and not finishing a class, yeah. but that's um, real, and that's that's why I am here rather than trying to find it. Yeah, I, think this is a trick I tried that. that for many years and I didn't get anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. Brilliant thinker people, I, I know you guys all understand that, but I think a lot of brilliant thinker people, like, it really is at play, but they're not, they don't really spend time thinking about how it's at play, so they are like, that's not at play, you know? Everyone's a human, so I really enjoy it. Exactly. We're not, yeah, no one is a robot, no matter how, how online you can win, you know? Yeah. 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 Like, please, you need to take time off. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. You need to take time off. Yeah, yeah. My goal in that is sustainability, but, but like, it's just, it can, you know, when people's expectations are different, it's really easy to go, oh, that person doesn't care or doesn't work on that, you know, because it's not what you're doing. So it might look like it is. And that's, uh, just that, um, the emotions that surround your, 
observations of what you think is happening uh, can really do a lot to a work right? You know, it can do a lot to group cohesion as well. And like, like I think, yeah, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really uh, 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 you plan enough to consider when you're the big organizing a business or if you get yeah. something. Which is great. That takes years to There's one And then it's people are doing things for these ideas too of like, we're trying to run a business in a way that business have been business has been run before and other things differently. That usually is that. I'd like to get a see the one at the deck. I know one was hanging in the Almost like a tree house. Oh, yeah. I think that covering these expectations is, for me, that's that's where my. Passion is at the moment. <laughs> I feel like there's plenty of ingredients, but that's like that's something that I feel like for me. Yeah, we have some more questions. Yeah, that's a meeting. Yes, I would. All right. Yeah, I need to. I left my phone at home, so it would have to be a little different. Here we go. Okay, for sure. It's you know what? I mean, this on the wiki. Yeah. On the, on the, on the wiki. So I still don't have access to that. <laughs> <laughs> the Charlie Grand Chat. Um, the, the book is called Creating a Life Together. And it's a case study. Oh my gosh. Read it. It's, it's like four or five case studies of people who have done um, like just their life in different ways. Like some of them, it's totally real. Some of it, some of it there's some of it, 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 Oh, so cool. I know. I've been listening to. Uh, he had a live uh, thing that he shared with the OSU group. Really and to, to, to do something like that kind of thing. thing. And he always told me to call me in, and I was like, no, not doing the call. Oh, that. That's not what I'm into. <laughs> um, and there, uh, there's one in IOC. Like, hey, there he is, guys. Let's give him another round of applause. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. But um, like we went down a couple times. Like they're married and they have young sons. Their son is about to go college after. You, uh, yeah, do you have a good dad? Yeah, this coming year. Good. And then it's like me and my girlfriend. And we're like, we're not going to get any other. Maybe. And so we looked at it. So like, it was so. I mean, it's so interesting to be not living, but they were they had a little organization and lots of things. I would say it's not the cheapest town to live in to begin with, and then they built basically very, very, very like well-built, <coughs> certified homes in the for a night. That square foot place oh, no. is yeah, they have this $300,000. What? Yeah, quite Which is, I was like, this is ridiculous. No. I'm like, I can't, I can't afford this, but I don't want to buy this. And they're just like, well, after this, it's not really just not that bad. And once you get the place, and if you get sold down, it's so like, yeah, I'm at zero. And I'm like, well, that's never going to pay itself off. And like, how did, how did you get that screwed by the contract? Yeah. 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 I think most people like, like, usually like a house that has like two side by side units on the floor, main floor, and then two side by side units. Yeah, this is so probably where I'll like go get a rest. Um, kind of quad bikes is usually they come in different shapes and sizes depending on what the area is. And so they kind of set the envelope and then within keep the yes. they get in during the build phase. So it's going to get to work with them. You can't do a lot more. That's like that's the largest size. 
There's an older couple of that, like, uh, one bedroom. Yeah, and, uh, the, the huge like one room. base room. That's 570 square feet. Even that was like, 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 my friend was like really, he's really into cop inspection and he's like, oh, he's a cop. His wife's like running a chain and she's running a mouse. She grew up a military brat and they've been in the house for like five or six years. And she's like ready for camp. So she was like, well, it's either we move to some state or we move to this new state. Yeah. 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 Yeah.